my name is Eddie Quinn. Um, I work for an organisation in Ireland called Camara Education Ireland. At the moment, we provide training and resources to teachers and youth work in the area of using technology with young people. Previous to this, I worked for different organisations in the area of youth work, primarily focusing on young people who would be engaging on a level of service position that would typically be level to high level threes or level fours of the hierarchical model. These included family support services, whereby I would support a family as a whole, focusing on child protection or child welfare issues. And also as a, a youth worker where I would directly engage with young people who are at a high risk of entering state care or would be in state care and had the motivation and ability to come home. The primary difficulties that young people would have been presenting with we would be independent living skills, engagement with the Gardaí or the, the police, they're known as in Europe, um, some levels of self-harm or, or kind of self, not um, dangerous behaviours that would lead to poor outcomes in later life. So my primary focus would have been independent living skills. So I suppose um, going back a couple of years ago, maybe five, six years ago, um, we were working with a lot of young people who were presenting out of nowhere as as just leaving school. We'll say first year, second year, second year of secondary school, just deciding I'm not going to school anymore for various different reasons. And for, for complex reasons, we couldn't get to the bottom of it. Communication started to break down. So what I did notice was all young people played games like Minecraft or different games like that. So I said, look, I'll give it a shot. I'll log on. I'll play a game with them with the with the approach of kind of the very much like the men's shed movement here in Ireland that that people talk a lot more comfortably shoulder to shoulder. So when you're engaged in an activity, communication seems to flow a bit nat more naturally. So I played computer games with them. We got a conversation going um, and I saw the real value in in a computer game being, first of all, a game that happens to have maybe more of a, of a visual cue than traditional games like sports games or, or board games or anything like that. But then when you break it down even further, I recognize that it's nothing more than play. And why why do any of us engage in play? It's to it's to assess the social dynamics and what is acceptable, what is unacceptable in the world. How do we find our place and how do we excel within our with our own level of skill set? So using our my knowledge of we'll say play and the dynamic and group dynamics and this, that, and other, I got to a, a common ground with young people whereby you can discuss subtly you know that it comes down to your own skill of subtly discussing com complex issues such as as long-term impact of certain types of behaviors or how acceptable is this how acceptable is that so i suppose i won't dwell on that the minecraft was one kind of lovely open space where you can create with purpose and 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 do a certain level of role playing and give tasks ask for returns and it was really it was a really positive way of developing a relationship so that i could break down that barrier of the therapist client kind of dynamic but anyway we that was that was my first foray into it we moved on then to look at other games i found that it was a great topic of community of topic of conversation with young people even even just talking about minecraft traditionally quieter kids kids that wouldn't shine in terms of i'm the sports person i'm the very smart person i'm the confident one that i can stand out in the group even if i haven't a clue what i'm doing the quiet one then becomes the expert and if you seek that and reinforce that you have a value within you have a you have a particular value that isn't maybe valued amongst some of your friends but it's still something you can play on still your strengths and there's an online community an offline community that you can engage with at that computer games quickly become something that a young person can be an expert in more so than any adult um, and thankfully now being the generation that were raised on computer games, a lot of us in our 30s and early 40s or late 20s are now also very comfortable with computer games and the worlds that they create. So I suppose going from there, then we looked at with other young people, a lot of other computer games, computer games like World of, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Call of Duty, all these games that are kind of sometimes in the in the media as real negative things. But as a youth worker, everything you do with a young person is is fun engaging exciting or or, or or a play and all those things but the real purpose you're doing is to get the under get to the underlying developmental needs of a young person so whether you're playing a game of football with a young person or playing a game of among us what you're really doing is giving the young person opportunity or giving them permission to express what they're feeling at that time so whether it's a game of football you're you're getting them to to be physically exerted you know engage with people on a team be competitive whilst also being cooperative. Like there, there are three different things that, and I, I'll move to it, that that are also really prevalent in Among Us. 
So at one time, you have to play your own game. You have to look at your own personal development. You have to look at how you impact on the team. You have to look at how the people around you impact you and how you and that team can interact to, to, to achieve a wider goal of that team. And also, um, my third point, which I'm after kind of forgetting, was the overall goal of a team and the dynamics you operate within. That can be both beyond, or the physical exertion, I suppose, and that brings its own benefits to physical health, mental health, and all the rest. Okay. Um, but let's let's look at that then in terms of a computer game. So really interesting topics have come up lately and in my role as a trainer where, where we talked about violence and computer games, which is, first of all, it's, oh, my God, what are we going to do? But, but second of all, we do sex education with, with young people all the time. Who the hell wants to talk with, about sex with a young person? But it's a really important thing, relationships, um, attitudes, uh, the media and how it portrays it. By playing by playing a game that's based that has a violent element to it, like Call of Duty or or anything that involves killing each other, you get you get an opportunity to discuss it with young people. So we we actually talk to the young people. It's like Call of Duty. Let's talk about that. Like yeah, you have a kill to death ratio, and you respawn, and you come back, and you you're comp- you're competing with other people. Sometimes it's a team based competition. But what about the realities of war? Let's have a chat about that. Let's let's discuss about. Imagine that was in your country. Imagine that was something that you had to go off and do. Do you have any relative that had to fight in World War Two? Could you talk to them about it? What are the realities of it? Do you know, when it comes down to morals, where would you stand? Would you be the person with the gun, or would you not? Um, and then you can actually talk about conflict. You can talk about the motivation as to why countries fight. You can talk about politics and. Young people are incredibly opinionated and they have a fantastic insight into this. And a lot of the computer games through single player campaigns really delve into these complex things that emerge. Like, for example, I remember having a really good conversation with a young person about Call of Duty and one of the campaigns. So the single player campaign and the level of detail they went into between the, the relationship between the soldiers, how they depended on each other, how they interacted with each other, you know, their purpose, their values, their goals, their their lifestyles. Like some in some cases, the, the only sort of, of security or or solace that they got was memories of their family, their loyalty to their country. So yeah, you're shooting each other on a computer game. And again, that's your football. You as a youth worker with the young people you're working with, you're digging under the surface and you're saying, what else is going on in that computer game? You know, you also can look at things like addiction, um, self-destructive uh, habits, things like, well, what's playing too much? Do you know, at what point are you any good at it? So I'll jump over to another computer game now. I'll talk about League of Legends, the, the most well, most played computer game in the world. It's the biggest player base in the world. And it, I played it and it frustrates the hell out of me. It is not good for my mental health, but I'm quite good at it. So I'm kind of proud of that too. Okay, and a lot of young people are, are incredibly skilled at it, but the the community itself, made up of millions of players, has come out with certain language, language that young people use every day, and language that adults just don't get. Terms such as flaming, going oom, tilted, three terms that to a lot of people, what the hell does that mean? Do you know? But flaming is 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 a state of play where a player is is venting or being angry. And if they're flaming, you know to target that player in the game because they're not playing at their best. They're not calm. They're not collected. They're not playing at their best. So target that person and they'll they'll make so many mistakes, you'll win. Okay. Um, things like going um is when you're doing really well and you're doing so well that you're ignoring the risks and therefore you will mess up and long term you have no chance. Um, and there's a really good one as well. Um, I can't recall it now. But anyway, there's also advanced concepts in League of Legends that I loved talking about with young people. Um, it involves tactics within the game, and you wouldn't believe how advanced some tactics go. So first of all, you you play as a character, and you're against another character, and both a people are controlling both these characters. So there's an element of unpredictability. So there's a, there's a there's an awful lot of mental assessment going on while you're doing that. You have to assess what your strengths are, what their strengths are. When is the best time to approach different things? What behavior are they engaging in so that I can engage in a, a behavior that I'll come out positively? If I come out negatively, how do I reassess that so I can re, so I can go in again? And like yes, it's a computer game. But these are really advanced tactics that need to be applied, not just in society, but in their careers, in their relationships, in every element of their lives. And again, you're playing a computer game and it's the youth worker's job to pull that learning out and get them to understand that, yeah, you're playing a computer game and people are saying you're spending too much time on it. But let's talk about the positives that you learn in there. Now, let's also talk about the influence it has on you. 
before the before the pandemic, we didn't have the resources to have a computer room or to facilitate facilitate young people coming in to play computer games together. So in the vast majority of times, we either paid for them to go to a to a LAN center, which would be a center that we'd pay to have access to all computers and have them playing together. However, the vast majority of times it was online play using a platform such as Discord or Zoom or or Google Meets or something like that. And as much as possible, I would be participating with young people. I don't believe in youth work from a distance, um, in everything, in every activity, whether it's an in-person activity, like I used to engage in a project whereby we used to bring 14 young people who were engaging really high risk away to an outdoor adventure center every once a week for a full year to do development work with them. Um, and you, you quickly see the difference between really effective youth workers and youth workers that are there, maybe not by choice. Um, often you sit with the young people when they're eating, you engage in conversation with them, just like you, you are their equal for all intents and purposes. You are privileged to be there, to be paid to be there, to encourage some element of, of learning and development. So in my eyes, like there's a big movement, well, there was a couple of years ago in Ireland for youth participation. And I found it pretty funny, to be honest, because I found the biggest challenge for a lot of youth work was staff participation. When you ask a young person to engage in something, you have to be willing to engage in it as well whether you're comfortable with it or not. And in my in my experience, young people are incredibly forgiving if you engage in something that you're useless at, whether it's a game of football or a computer game, they'll be absolutely willing. If you have the right attitude and respect for what you're doing, they will accommodate you as much as possible. So to answer your question in a long about way, I would have been playing with them as often as possible. Now, that's not to say that I wouldn't stand back on some occasions just to kind of appreciate the dynamic that's going on a lot but I found that if I was in the situation with them I was able to influence a lot quicker I suppose the best example I ever had with that was was recently even with Among Us so I would have been delivering training uh, for youth workers on how to how to play essentially um, Among Us and whilst I was delivering it I'd be given not advice but suggestions as to how you can promote the, the participation of quieter young people or even curb the participation of overpowering young people. Um, and one example would be play as a youth worker and have them tell you, die and have, have them murder you, have them influence you, have them give out to you and learn as you go and, you know, get that horrible abuse, you know, because it's constructive in an element. To, to one degree, you listen to young people interacting with each other online and you sound it sounds horrible. But young people have developed such a thick skin and an understanding that when you communicate online, it's very different than the, than the, the rules that present themselves in society. Um, and the best way to the best way to engage in that and raise that higher, that uh, raise that awareness is first of all to engage in it, not just be the corrector, not just be the police. So you know you don't actually hurl the abuse back, but you take it and you, you reflect on it, and then you, you carry that message to the young people online. Mm-hmm.